All right, what's up there SEO pros? Welcome back. Today we're going to be covering phase two of our concepts when it comes to uh, our SEO certification. At the same time, I'm going to be talking about why 99% of SEO agencies are dying or are going to die in the near future. Um, 99% might be a little bit high, but it's probably about 90%. Um, and the reason for this is that... Uh, People aren't niching down. And generally when you're doing SEO for multiple types of companies, you either know, need to know a lot about that company and have one person working individually for that company, or you need to have a templatized approach to SEO. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna be talking about is sort of the concepts around having a step-by-step -step system and then a being, being able to apply those different steps into your uh, SEO game plan um, when you either niche down or you actually give your work to somebody on an individual uh, basis, um, implementation basis. So um, <clears throat> if that doesn't make sense, let me just explain this to you um, with some actual visuals. And uh, I'm going to show you why when I've actually in the past tried to create my agency uh, to service like local businesses, national businesses, um, e-commerce, like all the different types of businesses that I wanted to um, work on, why we weren't able to be as efficient uh, rather than if we were to be spending our time working on either one type of client or having one person we hire work individually for one type of niche. So let me just show you what I mean. Uh, let me bring my this down a little bit. Sorry, I have like a bug bite on my face. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Cool. So welcome everybody in chat. Uh, can everybody see my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yeah, you're good. All right. Yep. So, uh, first of all, let's just break down what, uh, what you're going to have to do in order to scale an agency. So when you first start out doing SEO, you're probably going to get, you know, a few clients, let's say you're going to get, I don't know, a couple local, and this is, this is, again, if you don't niche down, which is mo what most SEOs do. Let me put this in notepad because my drawing is terrible. Let's say you get three local clients, three national or two national. And then you have a couple that might be coming in soon that are going to be like, I don't even know, e-commerce or whatever, affiliate sites. Because, again, when you start doing SEO and you don't like niche down at all, you're going to end up, you know, getting a lot of different offers um, from people you meet because not everybody's going to be in the same niche. And so the money side of you is going to be thinking, hey, look, let me, you know, go and try to uh, get as much money as possible by selling each of these people, let's say like $2,500 worth of implementations or even less because that's what I sell, $2,500 a month, right? And for a lot of people starting out, that's actually a really high um, retainer. So if you're going to be, you know, starting out, you're probably looking more at like a thousand to five fifteen hundred dollars a month retainers <clears throat> right and this is assuming that you don't even have a templatized approach you're not like doing the certification you're just doing like you know just kind of winging it and you're not doing like different phases you don't have that system made up so and this is where i sort of started started right um now the problem with this is when you have these different types of clients at five clients you could probably do this and get away with making you know let's say i don't even know what this is it's like uh, for $5,000 a month, let's say you're making $5,000 a month. And I was doing this fine myself, right? Like I was getting these guys results. I was spending probably like 10 to 20 hours per, or sorry, 20 to 30 hours per project. But even that's like, you know, 20 to 30 hours is, is, is only really good if you're going to be templatizing what you're doing. Um, so let me give you an example. So for my iPhone repair site, that I have full control over, iPhoneRepairSantaBarber.com, that's the site I sold. I was able to rank it in two months. And it's because I have full control over it. I kind of already knew about iPhone repair. It didn't take a lot of effort because I had all the people who I needed to write content in place to write content. It, it was like really easy, right? But when you start working with companies, you have to start figuring out, okay, who's gonna do the web design? What kind of content management system are they gonna be on? What kind of um, uh, uh, 
content are they going to need? Like, what are they going to be okay with? Because it's also about what the clients are okay with. What kind of images are we going to put on the site? And then also you individually, when you're doing the SEO, you also have to know a little bit about the site, right? So you're going to be like, okay, well, for... Um, you know, this side, I'm going to need, you know, 10 different pages about the different types of iPhones. Okay. What are the different types of iPhones? Right. And that's just for a local site. Now, once you start going into national stuff, it gets different because national SEO is a lot different than local. Um, obviously because you're going to need to like have sort of a different strategy. So for national, you're like, okay, I need to rank either product pages or, uh, you know, service pages. Um, but first in order to build up enough authority to compete nationally for those, we're gonna have to do content, um, start creating a blog. We're gonna have to figure out the different types of keywords that we need to be targeting around that. So again, you know, it's a lot, lot harder when you're, when you're, uh, trying to get all of these different people dialed in. And so what ends up happening is because you're only able to spend, let's say, as you charge more, you actually are usually able to do a little bit less, like let's say, you know, 10 to 20 hours, because now you have to pay for other people. Now you're training them to help work on these projects. Once you start scaling out to like, let's say 10 or 15 clients or even more. And then what ends up happening is your, your quality starts to suffer because your quantity is going up. So, Here's a couple of solutions to this. Again, one thing you can do is niche down, right? This is what I recommend to most people who start out. This is what I wish I would have done. So what you do is you go, okay, I'm only going to do SEO for iPhone repair companies. And, and what ends up happening is that you can end up selling your retainers at a lot higher because obviously, you know, you're getting, you're able to get results faster for these people and you're able to show that based off your case studies. But two, you're going to have all of the content writers you need in place, right? Cause you're going to know who exactly can write the articles specifically for this niche. You're going to know exactly, you know, what kind of templates you're going to need for web design. Who's going to be doing web design for that web design is a little bit easier because a lot of people do web design, but, um, if you're just doing specifically SEO, it's a little bit different. You're going to know exactly what kind of SEO you need to do for these, um, different types of pages. Like for instance, you know, do I need local pages? Do I need service pages? What type of service pages, what type of schema markup, right? You're going to know how to do all this stuff around, you know, conversion tracking specifically for iPhone. And you can start busting these templates out for like, you know, the same price, like 2,500 a month, but you're no longer needing to like figure out a bunch about the niche. You don't really have to talk to the client really on an individual basis as much where it's like, oh, well, you know, what do I have to do here? What do I have to do here? And it doesn't, it makes things a lot easier. Now, let's say you do want to end up going for um, all those different types of clients we talked about in the beginning, like national, local, that kind of thing. And you still want to make a shit ton of money. Like you want to make more money than you would make from, let's say, um, you know, uh, iPhone repair where you could charge maybe a maximum of 2,500. Cause when you start servicing a bunch of different types of clients, you can generally start charging higher retainers for, um, you know, the bigger clients that are going to be contacting you. Because if you're niching down most of the, most of the time, you're not going to be able to end up hitting on those like big, big clients, right? Like, let's say uh, one of the clients that we have is private label extensions, which they do um, hair extensions, right? And like these guys are like really, really big top notch people. And then we have, you know, other people that are making like 10 to 20 K per month off their site, which th that's not even close to this site. But what I'm trying to say is that these people can afford pretty big SEO retainers. So charging these people, you know, five to $10,000 per month is totally doable. Um, the first retainer we got from private label was $8,000. Now, Here's the question. What can you do with $8,000 a month versus 2,500? And the answer to that is you can pretty much, you know, do more hours, right? You can do more, uh, implementations and generally with bigger sites, they need a lot more work and a lot more, uh, like front loading, basically. Like you need to go in and start doing more things for them in order to show them results than you would for like a local site where you could do like a, you know, a little couple tweaks and you could end up probably ranking that site pretty fast, less competitive. So, what I'm trying to get at here is if you're going to be going for the multi-client approach, what you're going to probably end up wanting to do is get one individual SEO per client, right? And, uh, and this might sound insane to you because obviously if you're going to be doing that, you're going to be spending a lot more money on the SEOs, but you're going to have better, better, better case studies than you would if you didn't do that. Um, so let me show you what I mean. Um, so for the national local, let's say for instance, like you get a client, like private label, let's say you start out doing, um, all these different clients and then you end up getting to like five clients. And at that point you realize, okay, you know, I'm going to need to start hiring somebody else for these clients. At that point, what you could start doing is you could take the, you know, all the SEO that you're doing yourself and then start transferring it to the SEO. 
Now, obviously the way I would do this is I would just hire an SEO um, to like train or I would, I would have them intern, have them train, and then I would give them their own client to just kind of beta test them on that client and pay them around 20 to $30 an hour. Um, so even if the client right now is only paying, let's say, uh, you know, 2,500, I'm basically giving that project to the SEO, right? I could take a little bit off the top, let's say like 500 um, and give them like, let's say more like $23 an hour. Um, so that way I'm still making some money from that. And I'm seeing basically theoretically if they could take one client on by themselves. Now, uh, if they can, let's say they can succeed and they can spend, let's say, you know, let's say it's $23 an hour for $2,000, which ends up being like, you know, thousand or sorry, hundred hours, 120 hours, whatever it is. Um, I want to see what they can do within those 100 to 120 hours um, or even 160 hours, depending on how much, you know, we can get them uh, going for. Now, the point of what I'm trying to say is, look, if you're um, getting results, if you're able to get results within like 10 to 20 hours of work, which is doable, think about what you could do within a retainer where you're able to give somebody, you know, 120, 140 hours of work. Um, cause again, what your, your biggest goal as an agency isn't just to make money. It is to also be able to create insane case studies because once you get those case studies, as I said before, you're going to be able to increase your overall retainer and start getting those big, big, you know, uh, clients where it's like $5,000, $10,000. And let me tell you, there are, um, SEOs out there that are on literally like hundred thousand dollar retainers for some, for some mega sites. Right. But again, you have to be thinking. Am I going to be the, because there's three positions here. There's one, am I going to niche down and have other people work for me? Am I going to try to work doing SEO for a bunch of different people and then have people work for me as well? Um, so that's every one approach. Either way, in both these cases, you're going to need people to implement for you. <clears throat> Unless you niche down as well. You can, I mean, you could do this theoretically yourself, but at the at certain point, you're going to want to scale this. Um, or are you just going to want to work for yourself, right? Work for yourself and do um, all the implementations yourself for just one client for let's say like $20,000 a month, right? Because you could totally do that if you got enough case studies, you could easily just say, hey, look, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna only work for you for you know 140 hours full time and I'm gonna charge you $20,000 a month or whatever you wanna charge. Or are you gonna wanna try to, um, uh, are you gonna try to get hired by an agency, right? And even if you're gonna get hired by an agency, you know, getting, any of these things going for yourself and making a little bit of money here first is really going to help, you know, build up um, sort of your, the way you look, right? Your expertise, and it's going to make you more likely to get hired by an agency. So that's the first thing I want to say about um, sort of where things are headed. And, and again, where most people are fucking up is they're, what they're doing is they're starting an agency, start an agency. They end up not even doing just SEO. They end up doing like Facebook ads and Google AdWords and all this stuff, right? And they start hiring people because they make money. They start getting more clients and all these clients start suffering because they're trying to do too many things. They're not even just trying to do too much different, too many different types of marketing, but they're also, they're not, they're not really focused on one specific niche. They're not focused on, um, you know, getting people enough, uh, uh, implementations done. Like they're, they're, they're not training people well. There's just so much going on that people are not doing correctly, like that a lot of agencies are not doing correctly, which is why you hear, you know, horror story after horror story where people are like, you know, these people sounded really good in the beginning, but then, you know, they didn't end up actually doing anything. And it's because people really um, can do, a lot of people can do phase one type stuff in the beginning pretty easily. But when it comes to doing like phase two type stuff, which is the stuff I'm about to show you today, they don't really they don't really get to that part because they haven't niched down and it's very hard to start um, doing implementations when you go into phase two type stuff because you need to know a lot about that industry. So do we have any questions so far? Does all that make sense? No, nope, that makes sense. Yeah, cool. you're good, man. Cool. All right. So let's go into phase two. So generally the way I lay this out and um, <clears throat> Most of you guys know I use something called Basecamp. I just I put all my templates in here so I can just easily access them. So I'm gonna go into here. And we'll go into here. And we'll go into here. 
Oh wait, that's the new version. Let me go back. Um, we haven't, that's a prototype. <clears throat> all right. So what you see here is an example of phase two. And really all this is, is this is just a client that um, we're working on that, um, that we've mapped keywords to and all the other data. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna show you is how this sort of works, what you need to know about it, and then later in the certification behind the scenes, we're gonna be going over how to implement based off this stuff. So <clears throat> um, the first thing you wanna do for a website when you're auditing it, and this is what we do in phase one, is use Screaming Frog. So what you do is you open Screaming Frog, you connect your Google Analytics, your search console, you guys already know this, you crawl it, and then you paste it into your Screaming Frog call, crawl. Now in phase two, what you do is you copy all this information and you just plug it right into this address bar. Pretty easy. Um, what that's gonna do is it's just gonna show you, as you guys already know, you know, all the different stats, like the heading tags, meta descriptions, whatever, whatever, with conditional formatting so you can see if anything's below or under a certain average. Now on the left here, uh, we have something a little bit more interesting. Uh, we have the keyword that we want to rank the page for, and then we have the um, data for that page. Now, the way this works is generally when you're working on a website, you want to address the top of the um, top of the architecture, right? So on phase one, we address the bottom, right? We address the foundation. Now what we're doing is we're sort of addressing the top, which is where do all of the clicks come from, where does all the, you know, conversions come from in, in the website, that sort of thing. So <clears throat> let me put on my glasses. So uh, the way we do this is, first of all, we scroll over here to the right from Screaming Frog, and we filter by clicks. This is where we're going to see where most of the clicks are coming in from to the site. Next, what we're going to do is we generally want to look at the top 10 to 20 pages of the website first to see sort of what is a reoccurring theme going on with the website. And actually, let me tell you, um, this right here, this phase two is actually a little bit, um, little bit off. Let me see if I can get a different phase two because there are a couple other things. We're constantly like tweaking this so that we can make it optimal for um, sort of our implementations. Here, here. Here, uh, this one. Hold on, one other one. Okay, I think this is the one. Uh -uh. Okay, so, so what you're seeing again, it's sort of the same thing. We just added a couple other tabs. Um, so in here, what we have is, uh, again, the, the keywords that we want to rank the pages for. And again, when we first start out with a client, we usually are only able to do the top 10 to 20 pages for the client. So uh, again, that's because if we're not, like for instance, if, we're, if we were niching down, we'd be able to do more implementations because we'd sort of already know what these pages looked like. Um, and this is what I mean by that. Let me just show you. So uh, for iPhone repair, let me give you my iPhone repair example. Just, I just really want to make sure I'm explaining this right. So for iPhone repair, you can see here, this is all the URLs we've mapped in phase three. And I kind of have to explain to you phase three uh, in order to explain to you phase two. Um, phase three, again, is where we're doing the keyword research and we're mapping out the new URLs to the website. So here you could see for iPhone repair, here's all the different types of um, keywords we want to rank these different pages for. So for instance, like, you know, services, iPhone repair services, iPhone glass repair, San Francisco, mobile iPhone repair, San Francisco, so on and so on. Now, the reason why we're doing phase three over here is because we don't ha currently have any pages on the site. Now for phase two, 
If we already sort of knew what pages needed to be on the website, it's kind of easy to optimize them and know what's going on here, like sort of the reoccurring theme. Part of the reason why you address the top of the, of the website in the beginning is to see what is the biggest sort of issues that you see with the website early on so you can address the rest of the website and sort of know what needs to be on it. However, when you're working on, on websites that have thousands of pages on it, like a giant website like this, this website that's bringing in like a million per uh, month or whatever it is, um, this honestly needs its own SEO because 10 to 20 hours is not even close to enough to get all of this stuff done, even if it was templatized because there's so many pages. And I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean by that. So um, let's just go to the top pages that are bringing the most traffic. So let me take the address of this URL. So you could see uh, for wholesale mink lashes, how do I find that that's the thing we want to rank that page for? So what I do is I go into search console. Press start now. Different Google property. And again, you can see they are going up slowly, right? But the problem is, is that even with this slow progression, like they're up like in the last three months, like an extra 33,000 clicks, which you might think that's a lot, right? But when you're trying to build a case study, you can't take a screenshot of this, right? This isn't something that you can take a screenshot of. If you were building a case study, you'd want to take a screenshot of something like this, which is like, again, when I was working at an SEO agency, I was able to do something like this that I'm about to show you because I was able to spend hours and hours and hours doing this one thing. Um, sign in. So these are the type, this is the organic uh, keywords. So this is the type of screenshots that you can take that that's what people will hire you for. Or, and I'm not just showing you this to brag, I'm literally just showing you this because again, you know, you need, look at this. This is when I was, uh, when this is when I was working by myself, just this is like only one, one of the clients I had when I first started, look, this is when I started. So this is the type of stuff people will end up paying you 2,500, 3,000, whatever it is per month. But as you, as you scale out, as you get more clients, as you end up, you know, bringing in more people for, to work for you, this becomes less and less like appealing. Like this isn't, it doesn't look like this. It looks more like this, which again, people will still hire you for, but if you really want to actually get a lot of stuff like this going for you, you need to use the method that I'm about to show you if you want to scale at the same time and not be pulling your hair out and actually be able to go drink pina coladas on the beach or whatever you want to do. So, um, <laughs> so if we open this report and I go by pages, I can see here that the page I want to rank for is this one. Take the URL, plug it in like, so where's the page? There it is page, plug it in, <clears throat> go to queries. Let it load. And you're going to filter by impressions. And what you want to do is you want to find the keyword that's basically matches the page the best. So you can see wholesale mink lashes. Let's go try that out or we'll try eyelash venters. We'll go to the page over here, open it up. Just control V. Wholesale 3D mink lashes. Okay, let's go see if that's something around here. Wholesale, wholesale 3D. So for the most part, if we go and see the intent for this and we look at the page of what's showing up the highest for, you can see here everything that's ranking for wholesale mink lashes. A lot of them have the words 3D in it as well. So we might as well just go for that. If we wanted to go for eyelash vendors, we could see that what's ranking already. It's probably a little bit different. Like, let me go see. So mink lashes, eye vendor. So it's a little bit different. It still has some like similar intents, but for the most part, we kind of want to go and stick to the things that we are already sort of ranking for and what makes sense to our page. So it's not always better just to go for a higher impression keyword or higher keyword, keyword volume keyword, just because you're seeing um, more impressions. 
The other thing that you want to look at, and this is you know why we map this stuff out in our benchmarks, is we want to look at and see what is the um, did I just close that tab? Sorry. What is the UR of the page? Because generally, when you're when you want to rank a page, you want to go for a keyword difficulty within the range of where that page's current authority is at. So if I go and I type in um, you know private label, here it is. You can see the UR is 18. That's actually higher than it was last month. And the reason for that is because we do internal linking. We don't do link building. And internal linking is basically the same as link building, except you control the links. Um, so <clears throat> what we do is we go and we map that there. You can see UR 17. The difficulty for this keyword is 15. The way we find that out is we just copy, go to Keyword, Re keyword Explorer, see what the current keyword difficulty is. And here you can see it's 305, uh, sorry, three, right? Um, so we put that there and for some reason, I think we were mapping a different keyword before that the other one was 15, this one's three. Uh, so again, we want to go for keywords that are within sort of our range because those are the easiest ones to tackle. Um, <clears throat> now some other things that we look at on these pages is the duplicate con content <clears throat> because there's actually a very high correlation between <clears throat> websites with a lot of duplicate content and uh, and low rankings. So you'll generally see that if there's a higher duplicate content percentage on these pages, meaning there's less unique content to the actual individual page, the ranking will be lower. So you can see 8% here, 1.3, 12% there, 3.2, 4% there, 2.3. <clears throat> and uh, this is pretty common when you start seeing like, you know, for instance, really low ranking pages where it's like, you know, 33% duplicate content, average position 15 now, the way you can find this out and the way we map all this stuff out is we copy the URL, we bring it into a website called SiteLiner or just the website in a SiteLiner like so. And then it'll actually show us the duplicate content. Let me go into here, start scan. Apparently it's not scanned already. So let me just do that. And uh, what you could do is you just press duplicate content It'll show you the pages. You can click on the pages and then in here, it'll actually show you where the things are duplicated. Now, one thing you need to know, and I know we talked about this at phase one concepts, but uh, just to remember, we know you have a couple different types of content, right? You have the main content in the page and then you have the supplementary content. <clears throat> so if you have a bunch of duplicate supplementary content, that's not really a problem. Like meaning the <clears throat> footer or the header or the sidebar. It's where if you have duplicate content in the main content like this, that's when it's a problem because that's supposed to be unique to that page and you're not supposed to be duplicating that. <clears throat> okay, so now you kind of know about the duplicate content. Now you know about this other stuff. Um, and again, for the, for the keyword, when you map it, all you do is you just drag all this data over for a 30 day period, not a three month period. And then you just copy it into here. Now, what we do is we just have somebody manually doing all this, right? That takes a while. It usually takes about three hours per 20 pages to do all of this, plus what else I'm about to show you. Um, but that's why we're actually, I'm investing, you know, thousands of dollars into creating something that'll automate this, um, which should be out by the 20th, um, <clears throat> which will actually go and do all this stuff for you automatically for your websites. Um, if we end up doing that, that's going to be a real game changer, but, um, I'll keep you guys posted for internal links and external links. We kind of took this stuff out cause it doesn't really matter as much anymore to us. We just care about the UR. Um, let me delete these. Uh, if we keep scrolling, we have some other things, the content related averages. So <clears throat> SEOs really are only really responsible for a few things. And let me just show you what they are. So if you're an SEO and you want to get really skilled at SEO, your main responsibilities besides the phase one implementations, which is, you know, you know, schema markup, um, you know, anything that affects the site site wide, uh, schema markup, page speed optimization. That's actually web design. Um, trying to think. Uh, what are a bunch of, what are some other things in phase one? We got, uh, why can't I think right now? My, my, my thinking is dead. Indexation, uh, plugins, social data, like all the stuff that affects the site site-wide. So that's one of the things SEOs are responsible for. But once you get that down, it should only take you like 10 to 15 hours per website. And you don't even need to have that like templatized. It's pretty easy to do. But once you go into phase two, this is where most of your implementations are going to be done because phase one, it should only take you to get a month to get this done. You don't really have to look at it again. Phase two, 
um, which by the way, this is the audit template phase one. If you guys want to go in the, um, the link in the description is chaserunner.com forward slash audits. <clears throat> you're going to get a, um, you're going to get a free version of the phase one and you can actually learn how to do all this stuff. <clears throat> um, but for phase two, uh, that's really where you're going to be spending like the next like eight to 12 months or even longer for a website, because this is when you work on individual URLs. Um, so that being said, this is where you're going to be spending most of your time. You're going to be spending most of your time working on CTR optimization, internal linking, and, um, and content related averages. That's really where you spend like 80% of your time doing SEO. Now, the funny thing is, uh, there's other things that are involved in phase two, which is conversion rate optimization, uh, <clears throat> page speed optimization, uh, duplicate content, which is also goes in, goes hand in hand with SEO. But the problem is, is that a lot of this stuff relies on, uh, like content writers and web designers. And so in order to have like a really solid SEO game plan, um, especially for phase two, to be able to like to be able to do SEO for a long time in a sustainable way, you need to have web design, SEO, and content all dialed in for a client. Like you need to be able to get as much content as you need. You need to be able to do as much optimizations as you need. You need to be able to do as much AB and test AB testing as you need for um, conversions. So the question is, how do you do all this stuff, right? Now, if you're just doing SEO, the only thing you should be really worried about starting out is CTR, internal linking, content related averages. And the way you need to work with that is you also are going to need somebody to help you with content. There are some ways to get around this if you don't have somebody to write content for you, but content is super crucial and you need to either be able to get it whenever you need it from somebody you're going to be outsourcing the content to, or you need to be able to get it from the clients whenever you need it. Now, let's talk about CTR optimization. Um, by the way, we'll talk about all these content related averages in a second, but let's just go over the CTR. So again, this template's made so that all you have to really do is optimize based off of greens and reds. And, and before I continue, are you guys getting this so far? Is this making sense? Yeah, dude. Really straightforward. Okay. So there's no, you, there's no questions or anything so far. I, uh, when you rank for keyword difficulty, do you only use you? When do you use D? Like, I guess I'm just not understanding the difference between UR and DR. I mean, they're both kind of arbitrary. I kind of like eyeball both of them in a way. Like I'll look and see, okay, you know, if the website average, cause the, the U, the DR in my opinion, is really just like the average of URs. So like if we look at chaserunner.com and we see that the UR and DR is between like 30 and 30, that's a bad example. Let's say this was at 15 and 30, then I'd probably go from anywhere from like zero to 35 keyword difficulty. But for like new pages, I probably wouldn't target like, um, you know, th 35 off the bat. The, the way I like to do it is I like to target based on what I, on average I rank for. So if I know on average, most of the pages I rank for are between, let's say, um, and again, this is for new pages. This isn't for existing pages because phase two, you're not actually trying to rank for new pages in a sense, because you're not doing keyword research, building on new pages yet. But like, say you could see, um, you know, keyword difficulty three, keyword difficulty zero, zero, 35, 53. So some of these like that are ranking on the higher end, like 36, but they're ranking average position eight it's because I'm still not really hitting it there with the authority yet. So mm -hmm. for like new pages, I'd probably start out like anywhere between like zero to 15 for this site. And then as those start to bring in more authority, um, as they start to build their own natural authority, as we link into them and that kind of stuff, you're going to see all of the keywords start to rank higher. That's why I was saying you go like this, look at the, where they're currently going. Um, like for instance, eyelash vendors, whole, whole, wholesale link. And, and what they'll end up doing is these will end up ranking all these keywords together usually. Um, and then you can start going, re-optimizing for harder and harder keywords. Um, so like, for example, when I first started trying to rank for white hat SEO, which I don't even think I'm ranking for that anymore, but I was at one point, let's see, uh, am I on there? I think I'm on like the second page now. I was on the first page at one point. Um, yeah, page two, there it is. Uh, so what I did is I originally went for like white hat SEO techniques, 2019, like something really long tail, right? 
and there it is. Um, now this only brings in like 10 searches a month or whatever it is. And then it has like really low keyword difficulty because it's long tail. But as this starts bringing in more authority, then I can slowly start to re-optimize it for just like white hat SEO, right? Or let's say SEO techniques, 2019, whatever I want to go for, depending on where I want to try to put my effort into. Um, because again, once you start ranking for one thing, you can pretty much re-optimize the entire post to sort of be more geared towards, that's what, that's what the point of phase two is, is to sort of take where you're currently ranking, figure out the data, figure out where it's closest to and then optimize towards that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So, um, anyway, so the way you do it is once you map these things out, like, okay, here's the response time, how long it takes the page to load. Here's the duplicate content percentage, all that stuff. Um, basically what we're doing is we're setting conditional formatting to see, okay, do these meet the averages? So these ones don't have anything set up right now. They should. So like we should have like, you know, if this is above 5% duplicate content, we want to fix that. So cell is greater than or equal to 5% which makes it red. Um, and so on and so on. Same thing with response time, you know, anything above two, percent, two second load time. But the problem is again, is we can't, um, you know, we can't really focus too much here because we're not really in charge of the web design unless we are, which I would recommend not if you're gonna be doing mainly SEO. And we're also not in charge of the duplicate content because we don't really have access to the content right away. Uh, but what we are in charge of is the click-through rates. So if we look at here and we can see, you know, anything that's above or below 3% click-through rate, like let's say, you know, this page, 1.3% click-through rate, average position 5.5, Indian wavy hair. Now, I'm going to be talking about how to implement based off this in the implementation, in implementation section. But what you need to know is basically um, what we need to do is we need to do implementations based off this thing which is within the title tag meta description in order to optimize it so that it hits the average. Because the way it works is if, if generally, if you're hitting the averages for most of these things, and I'm going to be showing you the content related averages as well, they're going to be ranking like number like one to three. And the reason for that is if there's a low duplicate content percentage, if the response time is low or it's, it's high, right? Or it's, uh, it's got a fast loading time. You're going for the keyword that the page wants to rank for. It's within your UR and keyword difficulty. The average position is, you know, let's say the top in the top 10 pages or top 10 rankings, top 10, 20, whatever it is. The click through rate is high. Um, and then you're meeting the content related averages as well and doing the internal linking that I'm about to talk to you about. It's, it's more than likely going to end up eventually ranking very well for its main keywords. And it's just because you're hitting on averages. That's just like the basic concept around this. But again, you need to learn these different averages. So click through rates is one thing that, you know, you're going to be responsible for when you're doing purely just SEO. Another thing is internal linking. Um, obviously, like I said before, we don't do uh, link building, right? We don't, we don't build other links from other sites to, to these sites. We build those naturally. So what we focus on is building out internal links because those are going to actually improve the URs of these pages, help the keywords rank higher. So the way we do that, is with a couple things, right? We want to figure out relevant pages that are going to be um, uh, similar to our pages. Like we want to find, uh, you know, what other page is going to be talking about, you know, create your own eyelash brand and how can we link that from these other pages to this page? So that's gonna be another thing we're responsible for. We'll talk about that in the implementations. And then the content related averages. So this has to do with the benchmark or software I created or had created for me. And what we can do is we can use the software to scan all of these different um, keywords, right? And figure out, okay, what is the current average for the page we have? And then what is the, um, what is the amount of different content that we're gonna need for these different pages? Like for instance, what's the average word count uh, for the top 10 pages ranking? What's our deficit for that? What are the images, right? Um, and then what's the, what's the deficit. And then as well, other things that we're actually adding in here that, um, or should be in the main template, but it's in here in the scan. Um, like for instance, you know, what is the heading count, uh, of the, of the average? So it's one, what's the heading two count? What's the heading three? Um, you know, what's the ordered list. And then also when we go into word frequency, what are the types of word mentioned? Now, one of the things that we're actually coming out with for the software as well, is a uh, percentage calculator that will actually add all these up and then give us percentages based on 
um, what we need to add more of into the pages with a real time calculator where it'll just be able to scan the content. But that's something that's still in the works right now. For the moment, what we've been doing is just sort of eyeballing it and just looking and seeing what's the top average and then how does our page, you know, sort of meet up with that. And we'll be covering that as well in the implementations. Um, so again, this is all the con conceptual stuff when it comes to phase two. And really the biggest thing that I'm trying to get you guys to take away from this is that it's very, very difficult to do this for 10 to 15 clients efficiently. Unless again, if you're templatizing your approach where you sort of already know what phase two and phase three looks like, right? You already know the pay keywords that you need to be ranking for from a phase three perspective. You already sort of know what's going to be a reoccurring theme that you're gonna to need to see within phase two because there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you discover in these pages from a phase two perspective that is going to change pretty much your whole SEO strategy as a whole. Um, so if we were just to look at a basic website from a phase two perspective without even looking at this template, I can show you what these implementations look like. So just to give you guys an idea. So let's go type in, um, give me a, give me a niche. One of you guys give me a niche. CBD. Like local though. Uh, web design. Give me a town. Las Vegas. Cut. So let's go to 702 pros. So for instance, already here, and I'm not going to give away all this stuff, but you can see here, like the main keywords for, you know, web design, Las Vegas, you can see these guys are kind of doing it right. Cause they have it like mentioned directly in there. These guys aren't even really mentioning it in here. They're, uh, title tags truncated, right? So it's too long for the search result. They got call to actions above the fold, which is good. Uh, in terms of their internal links, they have some, looks like they're doing that pretty decently. Um, they have website design linked to an internal page under Las, we Las Vegas web design, which is really sort of the same thing that you're, they're trying to rank the homepage for. So they're probably cannibalizing each other. You can see the title tag is just insane right here. And you might be wondering, it's like, okay, well, why are they ranking Chase? It's because just because you're um, ranking for something doesn't mean that all of your SEO is amazing. And you can see here, they're actually doing a lot of things that are probably incorrect. Like all of these reviews, like uh, the social share count looks almost like it's hacked 46,000 shares on a homepage for web design in Las Vegas. Um, all these reviews are like, uh, probably aggregate rating on every page, which is against Google guidelines. They could probably get a manual penalty for that. Um, they have, they're probably meeting the content average, which is why they're trying to rank. And if we go and see an Ahrefs, what they're actually ranking for. You can see they're actually only ranking for like 500 keywords, right? So um, a lot of people ask, they're like, so, you know, don't you need links and don't you need to uh, end up um, end up doing all these weird, sketchy things uh, in order to rank higher um, for your keywords? And, the, and the, the thing is, is that you might be able to rank for one keyword really high by doing a bunch of sketchy stuff. However, when you look at, let's say like, let's see one of our clients, our sleep guide. These guys are ranking for 15,000 keywords with only a DR of 13, right? We haven't done any link building for them. Now, if you look at some of their competitors, some of their competitors are only ranking for like 6,000 keywords with, you know, average DR of like 40 or like tons of really valuable links. Now, the question is, why are those people ranking lower for keywords than these people are ranking higher? And it's because even though they're not ranking individually for really competitive keywords, what they are doing is they're ranking for um, less competitive keywords and slowly building up to more competitive keywords over time. And at the same time, what they're doing is they are, um, ranking clusters of content, right? So they're ranking for a bunch of individual lower difficulty keywords right off the bat, which makes them rank for a bunch more keywords altogether in the long run, rather than just focusing on one, like really difficult keyword at a time and building a bunch of links to it and spending all their budget there. Another example of this is a gaming website we created where we spent only money on content, no links. You can see here it's ranking for 3.3 thousand organic keywords, zero DR, UR data not even found. Now, why is that? 
is because we know that if we go for keywords within our range, we hit the averages that we need to hit, we're going to end up ranking for it, even though it's really low difficulty keywords. So that's what phase two is really about. And, and the best way to figure this out, right? Because again, we are going to need content. You're going to need web design. Like we didn't just rank the Siphon King website, the gaming website for 3000 keywords without knowing what the web design was going to look like, without knowing what the uh, content's going to look like, without knowing what the SEO is going to look like. We had to have all three of those in place. And if you're going to be spending your time working on a bunch of different clients, it becomes very difficult to be able to templatize or even know what you're doing at a certain point, especially if you have other people working for you and you're trying to train them. Um, another thing that you guys need to know once we go into phase two uh, is if we scroll over here to um, some of the other data like bounce rates, conversion rates, stuff like that, um, if we're under averages for these things like the conversion rates too low, the bounce rates too high, you know, a lot of that is web design. So like a good example is for conversion rate, you can't just put a new button on the page and hope it, uh, <coughs> sorry, and hope it boosts all the conversions. What you're going to need to do is you're going to have to A-B test. Same thing for bounce rate. Um, you're not going to be able to know just by simply changing the layout of the website right away if that's going to affect the bounce rate or not in a good way or bad way. You have to A-B test. And the cool thing about the benchmarking is you are A-B testing every month by being able to look at the new bounce rates. But if you're doing SEO, hold on, I need water. Sorry, I'm drinking like this protein shake and I got a piece of oatmeal stuck in my throat. Um, if you're doing SEO, you're not going to want to spend your time as well doing uh, web design, conversion rate optimization, page speed optimization, which is why in the phase one, I don't even do page speed optimization when I'm trying to show you guys how to do it because I don't have time for that stuff. And then when it comes to content, it's like when you're doing SEO and let's say you need to add uh, 500 new words to the page, a bunch of new images, all this stuff. Are you going to have time to go write out all that content? Are you going to be able to write out all of the words you're going to need to be able to internally link it to your different pages? And most of the time you're not going to be able to do that because you're trying to do all this other crazy stuff, right? Which is actually figure out, okay, what do I need to do for these different pages in order to rank them as a whole? How do I rank all these clusters? And the same thing goes for phase three. Once you go and actually do these optimizations for these pages, right? Based off the content related averages, based off the analytics averages, all that kind of stuff. Um, you're going to have to build out your new pages. <clears throat> and so what do your new pages look like? Well, the way this works is let's say you start doing, let's just say you're doing everything well in an ideal world. Like we we're talking about, let's say you niche down phase one, you do all the site wide SEO for an iPhone repair site. Let's say you niche down or, or you just work for one company when you start. Um, and that's done. That's good. That's good to go. It took you 10 hours to do. Phase two, you go and you see that there's 50 pages on the website, right? You go and map out 20 of those pages as we talked about first. You go and say, okay, these top 20 pages where they're receiving most of their traffic are ranking for iPhone repair, number five on Google, Samsung repair, whatever. And let's say you do the implementations based off the content averages, right? You get a website writer who's going to be doing the content. You get the web design done so that the response times aren't too high and the, the web design looks good so there's not a high bounce rate, so on and so on. And phase two is done for the top 20 pages. Now you go, well, what do I do next, Chase? Do I keep working on the pages? If those other pages don't really have any clicks and they're not really, um, there's not really any words on them or there's not really any point of them being there, nobody's visiting them, um, and they're not no indexed or right from phase one, then what you probably should do is just get rid of them, right? You either get rid of them or you repurpose them into new pages. Um, so that's pretty easy, right? Uh, cause if they're not really contributing to the site, they're really not, there's really no point of being there. And there's actually been a lot of times where I've actually gotten rid of content. It's actually helped the entire site rank higher because it's not diluting all of the other pages. And then phase three, all you're really doing is you're going, okay, what are the new pages, right? That I mean, I need to have for this site. Let's say I need, now I need to rank for, uh, I can see that I need to rank for iPhone repair, um, in another town. Uh, I need to rank for iPhone repair 
uh, for num for iPhone 6, right? And the way you do this is just based off competitive research. We'll be covering that in the implementations for phase three as well. Um, now the point is, is this becomes really easy. It becomes really easy to rank this site because you're, you're, you're um, able to pretty much do this in probably like, let's say, I don't know, the first couple of months, two to three months. Now, again, if you were to repeat that for other iPhone repair sites, you'd sort of already have this template for the other ones. So you could pretty much just copy and paste that into the next website. However, if you're going to be getting a site like, let's say this one, private label, where there's, you know, let's say 10,000 pages on it. Now you have to wonder, okay, what am I going to do, right? So first of all, you need to up your prices, <laughs> start charging a lot more. So 5,000, 8,000, whatever it is. And then get somebody to spend the next, you know, 160 hours per month only working on that site, which is same thing here, right? Phase one, phase two. So you do the site-wide SEO, you work on the top 20 pages to start out with, maybe even more, maybe like the top 50 pages, because uh, there's going to be a lot more higher traffic pages. And then you're going to need to figure out what you want to do with the rest of the pages. And, and a lot of that's really going to determine on what the site owner wants to do, because they're going to have a lot of pages that they're probably not going to want to get rid of. You're going to have to do keyword research. Same sort of thing, except the problem is, is with this site, you only have like 20 pages. You don't need to know a lot about it. You can templatize it really easy. With these type of sites, it's a lot different, right? You need to spend a lot more time and it's a lot better to have somebody who you could literally pay the same amount that you would pay to do this sort of stuff, maybe a little bit more and actually get a higher ROI, right? So let's say they're paying you $8,000, right? You get people, you get some, one of your workers certified and then you get them to do, let's say 2,500, you pay them $3,000, right? So you're still making a, or let's say you pay them $5,000. You're still making a $3,000 a month ROI from this. But now you have somebody who's fully working on this website like this. Um, so we'll be covering more in detail in the implementations, how to do all this stuff for uh, phase two. But that's really just the biggest concepts. And that's why um, you guys really need to think about before actually going in and doing this stuff. Um, you know, what do you want to do? Because it's really easy, like I said, to make your first $500 per audit doing SEO for a client, like you could easily charge $500 per audit and just make a living doing that and start ch charging more and more, like let's say five, you know, 2,500. That's not where you're gonna make all your money. Um, you're gonna make most of your monthly from reoccurring revenue, like, uh, you know, monthly reoccurring uh, $2,500 to start, start increasing your prices or templatize and then charge lower tickets, uh, items where you can just copy and paste type of stuff. Any questions? No, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, no skills? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I mean, Zach? No, man. That looks good. Um, so, yeah. So the, so, the, so the whole thing that I'm actually getting at here is like a lot of you guys know that I'm an, I'm an SEO company. Uh, or I have, I've had an SEO company. I got about, you know, around this 10 to 15 clients. I've been trying to do this for the last three years. And even though that I've been getting results from my clients, it hasn't been the type of astronomical results that I've wanted to get. Cause I'm all about quality. I'm all about getting people the best, you know, they can get. Um, so the way it's been working is that, you know, people in the certification, what we're doing is I'm actually taking people who are getting certified and I'm connecting them with people who want to hire the chase finder agency, uh, for, for, their services um, or for our services. So if you guys want an opportunity to possibly get hired by an SEO company and get uh, your like first case study going and make, you know, a full-time income doing uh, SEO, I really recommend you guys go and check out the certification. Um, the email, if you guys want to email, it's hello at chasefinder.com. And uh, that's pretty much how I'm going to be doing it from now on. It's sort of in beta still, but, um, what we're doing is we're, again, we're taking people out of the certification who get certified and we're getting them connected with agencies so they can get, um, you know, that first, you know, 160 hour a month job doing SEO for specifically one client at a, at a three to six month contract with that client. Um, even maybe, maybe a higher uh, contract as well. And then build out their first case study doing SEO full time um, to show something ast astronomical like that while at the same time getting trained by me and then joining everybody else in the certification. 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for today. Um, does anybody have any questions in chat? Hi, Chase. One question regarding scope of SEO campaign. Do you go into streamlining their backend CRM system as well as Zoho CRM? Uh, CRM. No, I don't know. I don't even know what you're saying. Do you guys know what they're saying? Do you go into streamlining their backend CRM system? I have no idea what you're talking about. Never asked answered the question as to who. What do you mean who? I don't know what you guys are talking about in chat. Um, all right. Well, I'm gonna sign off, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Until we do, happy SEOing.